Hey everybody, welcome back to Breakfast with Bob from Clash Daytona. My name is Bob Babbitt. We're brought to you by Toyota Captiva Spine Foundation Risk Partners and, of course, USA Triathlon. Our next guest, Meredith Kessler, who hopefully is finally healthy That's right. and ready to race. Thanks, Bob. I'm so glad to be here. How many years have we done this together? I'm so grateful. A lot. A I lot in Kona, a lot all, all over the world. And every time, I'm sure there's some kind of drama to talk about. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, the main drama has been you. Yeah, right? Just getting healthy. So yes. I think when we chatted in Miami, mm -hmm. it, it was COVID. It was. I uh, it was a couple. Uh, it was about a It's November now. Yes. It was about a year since my family had COVID. And as I told you in March in Miami, I was like, man, that was that threw me for a loop. I was like a goth vampire for several weeks. Yes. Um, again, my husband and son got it. And they were asymptomatic. Minor, right? No they problem. They didn't feel a thing. Aaron didn't feel a thing. Uh, Mac was fine too, but we did our proper quarantine. And I thought I, I really believe I recovered from COVID. I was Zwift virtual racing well. I didn't feel any lung restriction. Blah blah blah. Fast forward to March, um, I got the. J and J vaccine like a day before it shut down. And again, I don't know. I'm not blaming anything. I'm I'm glad I'm vaccinated. That's great. But I know that particular vaccine, and I've never been a good <laughs> reaction to vaccines. I.e., when I was pregnant with Mac, I got like the flu shot and another shot you need when you're pregnant. And I was like nine months, and I truly thought he, he wasn't kicking as much, and I was so sick. I thought he was like not good in my belly, oh and my I God. called the doctor. I was like, help. It was neurosis. He was fine, but I've never reacted well to. That, right, sure. When I got this J and J vaccine, it honestly felt like it inserted COVID back into me. I was a goth vampire another several weeks. But then when I started to race again in May, St. George, Tulsa, it was like, look, I, I understand that we're out of breath and we have a lot of restriction when we're racing, but I've been doing this for twenty years, this you know, the long distance, short distance, whatever. And I know there was something not right with me. I had this extreme restriction that I've never felt before. Boring story short, I got some CT scans, got all the all the things, and it turns out I have literally, it looks like my lungs have been filled in with scar tissue. This was, again, back in, um, in the summer. Yeah. My point of saying that is I don't know if it's from the vaccine or from having had COVID, and I'll never know because I don't have scans from the sure, time after before. COVID. But my point is the good news, keep fast forwarding, I'm in a much better place in terms of like feeling the last six to eight weeks in terms of... You know, I don't know. It's still a little bit there. Haven't had a CT scan in a while. We'll get one after this. I just want to see how my training parlays into racing. And if I can just feel like myself again, life is good. I'm in, under no delusion of winning. I just want to race with gusto right. and race like myself. Again, I, I, I train. We, we all train so hard. And I just want to be able to feel like if I race my hardest and I have my best splits and I feel great and that places me eighth, that's a good day for me. <laughs> you know sure. what I mean? It doesn't matter. I just want to feel like myself is what I'm saying. Yeah. That, that has to be so hard yeah. because you, when you're in the race yeah. and you know yes. the training you've done and it's yes. not transferring. And what happens is you, you then just participate like in St. George in Tulsa in Boulder. I, I, you become to just participating because you can't do that effort. And see, I get a, I, back then I got away with it in training because in training you get respites. You sure. do oh, 10 minutes really hard and a couple minutes easy, whatever it is. And then in racing, <laughs> you don't get respites. So, and this race on Saturday is awesome distance, but I mean, you're at threshold. The you're at boom time. the whole time. And there's no, like you'll see me jump roping before right. I get in the water. I can no longer, especially at 43, I can't go from 50 heart rate to 160 in like 10 seconds. You gotta get your heart I rate I got it, and especially you're... with this situation I've been I've been trying to navigate through, I have to constantly just get it up, get, get my heart rate up, get everything warmed up. Wow. Yeah, so and that's where we are. So when you, when, when you get through this race yes. and we'll be, let's take some time yep. off and really yep. let my body recover. And then yes. hopefully if the world is back to normal, yep. cause you, yep. you love New Zealand. I do. You love, yes, uh, we do. Yeah. Clash Miami, yeah. even though 62 hairpin turns pretty much eats me alive. Uh, yes. But I love Clash and I love what Bill has been trying to build at Speedways across the U.S. Right. I, I'm his biggest fan and supporter. So oh, we would be there for sure. Well, you were there from the beginning when 100%. you guys, guys sort of created only, this whole thing. Yeah. This distance, everyone can blame my myself <laughs> for the distance sure. too. It's like not quite a uh, you know a half distance and it's not quite a Olympic. It's kind of you know hovers in the middle. Yeah, it's it, a fun distance, it's right? It's a clash distance. Mm -hmm. It's a clash 
distance. And you had awesome. the opportunity to go yeah. up to uh, Clash Watkins Glen. Yeah. To the venue July 9th. There. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wine, this weekend. Of course, or wine festival. This summer. Yeah. Yes. Wine festival. It's going to be what, epic. And you, you really enjoyed that course. Okay. Listen. I love the Miami course, but as I just said, 62 it's hairpin turns. It's like, what? Really, yeah. I'm just not a technical person, but the technical riders, they, love they it. will crush. I'll still do it. I just am a little bit more meek than others on those. Now, Watkins Glen has a climb every single loop. That's my jam. Right. Grind it out. Let's grind it out. So if like it, it requires so much strength in terms of um, having a hill every lap. And then the run, there's still that climb in the middle of a speedway. I mean you have a couple thousand feet of climbing in it not to mention when you get out of that lake yes which is in watkins Glen. Well, you climb right from the lake right four mile climb like <laughs> big climb not just like a dainty climb you climb which is awesome it's beautiful to get mm. into the speedway and then you start doing loops around the speedway which have that climb in it it's it's a really nice venue and it's going to be yes a festival weekend right so it's going to be so much fun it's a place for families to go and enjoy bring your significant other have some wine watch the race uh enjoy it all it's it's in the finger lakes it's beautiful i went to school in upstate new york oh in so Syracuse. that's right in your area yeah so this wasn't that far it was great so at the age of 43 yes how have you had to adapt obviously besides sure. this whole COVID thing yeah how have you had to adapt to to aging as mm-hmm. a triathlete yeah sure uh, uh, you know my husband and i always say train smarter not harder we got that from crowey right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and listen that's under no delusion of you know, you, you have to put in the time. You have to put in the, you know, the swim, bike, run, strength, whatever it is. But it's just not, you know your body best by this point. I also have a, a tiny human to manage who t- wears me out, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, in, in the best way possible. So you just have to, like, put it through that lens. Like, Meredith, okay, you are feeling like a 2 out of 10 right now. Will this workout be a value add today? No, it won't. So you just have to think about it. And mm. then let's save this for a day where you know you're going to hit it and, and shimmy things around. And that's what my team does. They know when I can thrive and when I might need a little bit more recovery. Yeah. You've also been involved with PTO. Yes. With what's going on yes. there with, the, with sure. Collins Cup. And, sure. And we're in a pretty cool era between Clash and Super League and Watkins Glen and, yep. and all of all mm-hmm. of this and obviously PTO. Yep. What what has been your takeaway from this last couple of years well, of PTO? PTO is just this evolution and a bunch of us got together years ago, TO, Rini, like so many, uh, mm-hmm. and we tried to really be a platform for triathletes to thrive mm-hmm. and be like the NFL and the NBA. And I mean, obviously it might never get to that level, but we're doing pretty well because Rachel Joyce also a part of that. Yes. Rachel and I, and Rennie and I talk, you know, if, if we were, if, if PTO was around when we, when we were all pregnant with, with our we first, got, yeah. we would have got tons of money. You know what You're I mean? Right. So it's like, even just alone, the maternity policy and paternity is a huge value add for women triathletes sure but also right now here we are the end of december this is the final race in the pto rankings and people can skyrocket and if you're in the top x amount you're getting a payout at the end of the year yeah that's pretty incredible yeah i think what's 100k at the top or something like that yes Yes. and they also paid when there was no racing correct right the year there was no racing and i think that made a statement it did let people know that okay we're here to stay right right and as you saw in the collins cup big event huge more coming in 2022 it's really going to be an epic journey on the pto and it was very cool to you know be part of the genesis of it Uh, very fun Mm -hmm. and being back home i know it's hard when you left san francisco to move back east to be with family yes Uh, looking back on it now Mm -hmm. was uh, how hard was it to leave and how good is it to be to have Mac growing up with family. Right. It is. You know, as 43, my parents, Aaron's parents, they're yeah. older. You know, we right. feel like we've enriched their lives too, bringing, bringing ourselves back, but also Mac is right. the main, of course. main, He's a draw. main guy. Yeah. He's a draw. Yeah. Uh, but also the Midwest lifestyle. We, we were born and raised there. We went off to California for 20 some years or whatnot, and we moved back now four years. And you know, we've created a community. Mac has a great community. We have a great community and our family is all there. So, uh, we really appreciate that luxury. And we, you know, we rented for (laughs) 20 years and at 40 some years old, we feel fortunate that we were able to purchase a home, which we couldn't do in California. And we love our, our little, you know, community that we have in our neighborhood and Mac's really thriving. And that's the most important thing to me is his happiness. So. 
So professional triathlete, yeah. is that something mm -hmm. as at 43, 44, mm -hmm. 45, yep. is that, that's still in the cards for you? Have you seen DDG? She sets the bar she, high, she 51 does. years old. Yep. And still being kicking the, butt. Yeah, being, she's uh, in Cozumel, you might have seen 430 yeah. bike in, in, uh, in a 112 miles. That's impressive. Uh, yeah. So she sets the bar high for, you know, a 43 So there's no way you can get no. out. No, now I got to get to 52 at least. No, of course. No, no she, I, I, you, you know, I've done this for so long. I can't imagine, uh, you know, I'm not, how do I say this? I, I'm not sacrificing anything and right. that's important to me. Sure. I put in the time to train. I build it all around Mac and um, sure it's expense to get here and there, but as long, once I'm sacrificing something, then it's time to hang my cleats up and I'm not doing that right now. I'm enjoying the journey. I still have passion for it. Once right. that dies too, it's probably time to yes. to call it a day but I'm, I still enjoy it I enjoy the process even when I get an adversity thrown <laughs> at me little, whether it's yeah. a bike crash or you have COVID and you have scar tissue in your lungs and you can't breathe right blah 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 um, I've always had the that gratitude in me that there's a lot of people suffering <laughs> from COVID I'm still able to do what I am doing even if I don't feel <laughs> like myself at all and I've really focused on all the things I have been able to do during COVID and during this, how I felt post-vaccine and all that, I'm focusing on that, and that's where my uh, gratitude lies. Love it. Meredith, have a great race yeah, on thank Saturday. thank you. I'm excited. Always Look a at pleasure this. to yeah. chat, huh? You too, Bob. Thank you for all you do for us. I mean, you put us out there to be able to talk to everybody, and thank you, everybody, for listening to all of us and to Bob, who just makes the triathlon world uh, a better place. <laughs> You do. I'm just letting you know. Okay? We, we love this woman. Again, Breakfast with Bob, Clash Daytona, the amazing Meredith Kessler. Uh, hang on, everybody. We'll be right back.